Good morning, family. Today is September 18th. Today is Monday, 2017, and it is in the wee hours of the morning, somewhere around 2, 2.15, somewhere around up in there. And I have come on to prepare some slow-cooked, Asian-style, sticky pork spare ribs. Now, to make this particular dish, family, I've already uh, pre-measured a half cup of brown sugar. We're going to have uh, a tablespoon of smoked paprika, uh, one tablespoon of garlic powder, um, a half a tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of Asian uh, Perfect Pinch seasoning, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and we're going to whisk this together, and we're going to make a quick rub really quick. So let's do that first. So, I've already taken the liberty of pre-measuring my seasonings. So you just, I'm going to be careful with this so that I don't make a mess and do it all at one time. Perfect. I did not make a mess. Now, um, I didn't have the garlic powder already measured. So let's do that. And we are going to put some salt in there too. I just didn't pull it out yet. But I'm going to pull the salt out in just a few seconds. But I wanted to uh, give mention that to keep your brown sugar soft and fresh, um, you want to put it in a Ziploc bag like this or just simply leave it in the box with the wax filling and uh, close the box up and put it in the freezer and your brown sugar will not uh, harden up. It will stay fresh. Okay, so we're just kind of mixing these dry ingredients up very well and trying to keep it all in this bowl and not have it all over my counter. So I'm trying to be modest with the mixing here. Okay, let me get the salt. Now, actually, I should be using kosher salt and about a good tablespoon of it, but uh, I'm not using that because I don't have none. So we're going to use some regular store-bought regular salt there. And I just sprinkled some in there. I don't want this salty, so I'm going to taste it as I go and see if I need a little bit more salt. But, you know, salt just ruins a dish when you have just a little bit too much salt in there. And I just, I just don't like my food salty. Okay, so let's work on these ribs. Okay, um, this here is uh, like some would call it silver skin or some would also call it a membrane. But to have your ribs very tender, you want to remove this on your ribs. Now, um, what I did, every time I buy my ribs, let me get the other piece here out of the package. But when I buy my ribs, I always have the the uh the the main rib bone here cracked so you want to tell the butcher you want them cracked okay so then therefore you won't have a hard time with cutting this portion off as you begin to slice your ribs once they're done 
Um, but I have them cracked and I also have them split down the center like so. So then therefore, um, it gives me more of a smaller rib, more of like a baby back size. So you can take one full slab and make, in a sense, two smaller slabs of ribs. And I've been doing that for so long that that's where the way I always get my uh, ribs cut like that from here on out. So, but uh, just a little tidbit if it's something that you might want to do. Um, yeah, the ribs are smaller, but, you know, they're also, especially if you're having a party or something like that and you kind of, you know, not wanting to feed everybody to where they're about to fall out, but you do want them to um, eat well. Um, so then, therefore, uh, get your ribs uh, cut that way. Okay, so once um, you get up under here like he, like so, um, then you can just kind of work it through gently. And you can begin to pull it away from itself. And so it does take some time and you do have to work with it. But one thing I do uh, find it to be easier when they aren't, when the ribs aren't really wet, uh, then it's easier to pull it off. But when it, they're really wet, it becomes more slippery and it's harder to work with. So just keep that in mind. But once you begin to get it going, then it's just one long uh, strip. So I'm going to work with these ribs and we'll be back in a moment to begin to uh, rub them down. I am simply sprinkling a little bit more of the um, Asian seasoning on top of the ribs. What I did was I simply spiraled them inside of uh, the Ninja oven and I stood them upright. So let me kind of come in a little bit so you can see. Okay, they're standing all upright and they're in a spiral type of motion here and what we're going to do now is we're going to prepare our sticky sauce so that it can cook on top of our ribs as we begin to set our ninja for about eight hours and allow it to cook overnight we're going to cook our rice now 
um, because to make a really good uh, fried rice, you want like a day old or cold uh, fried rice. It fries much better and it won't turn into mush. So we're going to do that now. I assumed I had more rice than this. I thought I had some Uncle Ben's, but I didn't. So we're going to just work with what we have at this hour. And cut off the fire. To make our sticky sauce, we're going to use the rest of this soy sauce. It's just a little bit. Um, we need about two-thirds of a cup. Um, so we're going to do just that little bit there, maybe about half of it. About half of it is about two-thirds of a cup. Um, we have one tablespoon of uh, sweet chili sauce. We're going to do a half a tablespoon of ginger, a half a tablespoon or equivalent to two teaspoons of black pepper. We're going to use one teaspoon of onion powder, uh, two thirds of a cup of honey. Um, we're going to put some brown sugar in it, about two thirds of a cup of that. And we're going to put a scoop of our minced garlic. So let's get this started. First, we're going to take our sweet chili sauce. We're going to do the wet ingredients first, and then we're going to put our dry ingredients in. About six cloves of garlic. As you can see, I don't measure much of anything. I just kind of eyeball it and if it tastes right, it's right. That's the way my mom always said, if it tastes right, it's right. Okay, so we're going to get that stirred up. We're going to take our dry ingredients. And our pepper. And then we put them inside of our liquid and then kind of whisk that back together. Okay, let's pour it on our meat. Now, I'm going to add just a drop, a little bit of water in there, just to loosen that up just a little bit. As you can see, just a little bit of water. And we're going to only pour half of this over onto our ribs here and then the other half we will baste 
later on in the morning with the other half. The other half of our uh, sticky sauce, I'm going to place it in the refrigerator and later on today, I'm going to simply add a little water and some cornstarch to it and bring it up to boil and we're going to baste um, our ribs with the remainder. But for now, we're going to simply cover it, put it in the refrigerator and use it later on. We're going to cook this on slow cook at eight hours and we're gonna just allow it to cook all morning. Good night family, good morning. We're going to leave our rice uncovered. I have also rinsed it off very well to allow this, the uh, cooking action to stop so that it won't continue to keep cooking and cook, keep, keep cooking, keep cooking, keep cooking, and then it will begin to turn to mush. So um, I've rinsed it and I'm going to leave it uncovered and I'm going to allow it to cool down naturally. Then I'll cover it and place it in the refrigerator. Good night, family. Good morning, family. Let's check on our ribs. Oh, wow. They look good. Now, um, the rest of our uh, sticky sauce that we had last night, um, after these last 53 minutes are over, then we're going to um, reapply that, and then we're going to sear them in the oven. But we're going to allow this last 53 minutes to cook, the, cook them through and through. But they look so good and they smell so good too. Okay, so we're going to take these ribs out of here. Oh my God, look at them. They're just falling apart. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Look at that. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Let me get me something else to work with. Mm. Oh, wow. They are simply falling apart. Like, literally. So what we're going to do, because they're falling apart, so I'm going to baste them at the same time. So let me get the get my juices together first. We're going to take this juice here and we're going to pour it into a saucepan. And we're going to make our, our sticky sauce with this extra pot liquor that we have left. So I just want to 
pour the juice off of this first. Oh, it's hot. Okay, I have poured all of the juice in this pot right here. And so, but what we're going to do is we're going to separate the grease from the good pot liquor here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pour this in here like so. And it's going to separate as you will be able to see in just a moment. So, actually, the way that it goes, the oil separates itself. So when you pour in it, you will be able to discard the oil, but keep your good stuff. So I'm going to take out most of that. And then, that's... and then as it gets to the grease, then that's the part that you don't want. So I'm going to finish skimming the rest of this oil off. Auntie, where can I get me one of those? Well, you can go to any like uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, a lot of your kitchen places, probably um, World Market, um, different specialty stores like that will carry this. But it's simply called an oil separator is what my mama used to call it now. If it's something else, I don't know. But it's a good thing to have when you're trying to skim the fat off of your liquids. Now I could take this same juice and I'm going to pour it back in the pot. take our sticky sauce from last night I just covered it with some plastic and we're going to put the rest of this inside of our mixture here so now we're going to just simply add just a little bit more um, sweet chili sauce in here just a little bit fix it to your family's uh, specifications on how your family might like it but I don't do much measuring really I just simply go as far as taste is concerned and that's just some more smoked paprika this stuff is so oh my god this is so bomb Okay, now I look much more better with getting my whisk. Where is my whisk? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get some cornstarch to kind of thicken this up a little bit. What I've done is I just added a little bit of water to this cup. And we're going to take just a little bit of cornstarch. And we're going to thicken this up a little bit.
we're going to simply thicken up our sticky sauce. Let's add a little bit of honey. And we're going to layer these ribs with the sauce and with the ribs together. Wow, these ribs are just breaking apart. Let me see. Just pour it all on top of here, and then we're going to just 
put it in the oven and just kind of sear the sauce. Ah, I dropped some of it on the floor. And we're going to just sear the sauce on top of the mixture of meat and sticky sauce. We're going to bake it uncovered. We're going to bake this uncovered for about 20 minutes. We're putting our last packet. So we use a total of two packets of fried rice seasoning mix.
down. Please ensure that your hands are very clean and your workspace area is very clean because as you begin to start working with food with your hands, you want to ensure that the bottom of your nails in your cooking space is very, very clean for your family. With clean hands, then you go in. My hands are so wet I can't grip. Okay, there we go. Then we're just going to add some cheese in our salad. Let me rinse my hands again. Make sure you get under your nails, under your nails, ladies, under your nails. Then you go back in there and again, rinse them again. So put that in the refrigerator. The toss salad is ready. Why do I keep touching the top of the oven and it's hot? Jeez.
Okay, I can cut off the oven. It has baked for about 20 minutes. So basically you're just searing the sauces together onto the meat. Oh, I got to take a picture of that first. Oh, my God, I got to take a picture of it. Oh, my God, that looks so good. From my home to yours, bon appetit family. You guys have a good night.